Welcome to The Artist Loft, the talk show for all artists. Join us each show as we spotlight a variety of different creatives, hosted by the Florida Arts Network with Richard Sosa and Frank A. Raffolo. Good evening, Lofties. Hey, 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 Lofties? <laughs> Might as well call him Lofties. Okay, there. he just he just sprang that one on me. That's just that's that's awesome. Hey, how's how's everybody doing? I'm Richard Sosa. Frank Rafolo. Frank Rafolo, and we are back with another episode of the Artist Loft. But before we get started, um, I just a shout out to my daughter Tiffany because today is her neck anniversary. And what pray tell is a neck anniversary? <laughs> About 11 years ago, she fractured her her C1 and C2 in a. Uh, in a cheerleading uh, accident. And for a while we thought she was gonna be paralyzed, but she's, she's okay, she just had to wear a neck brace for about eight weeks and you know. But her cheerleading days were, were over and so she came up with the name neck anniversary. so you know. All right, sweetie, I love you. <laughs> Happy neck Um Okay, so uh, the Artist Loft is an arm of the Florida Arts Network. We are a 501c3. Uh, and so, uh, naturally, we appreciate uh, any, any way that you could help us, whether it's with donations or time. Um, we, we really want to really do things for Florida kids, uh, introduce them to the arts, uh, uh, give some, some scholarships. Uh, I, you know, I have, I have run into some incredibly talented kids that they just didn't have the money to uh, be able to work on their craft and so we would want to we would want to uh, give them like maybe six months of dance dance lessons or six months of vocal lessons or uh, be able to pay for them to go into say an acting workshop you know thing, things like this this is this is what we want to do uh, with Florida Arts Network and then you know through this show what we do is we highlight uh, artists that are already doing it. You in, know? All, in all forms of art, visual, yeah. performing, and verbal. Yeah, yeah, if you're, if you're an, an author. Yeah, if you're an author. You know, we've, we've interviewed a couple of authors. We've interviewed uh, actors. Uh, uh, we have um, a dancer uh, that's going to be coming on the show soon. We've got... Uh, 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 what do they call it? cover bands? You know, s stuff like this. You know, there are people that are that are out there and they're fighting the fight. Yep. They're overcoming. They're overcoming hurdles, and we want to share their stories because some people might think, "Oh, wow, you know, yeah, I would love to do that, but ah, I don't. I don't think that I can." Well, it may be tough because anything that's worth doing is tough. Is is going to be? It's going to be tough. It's going to require work, right? But. There are others that have overcome all these different hurdles, and they share their stories to, to encourage you. And if you have a business or brand, you can become a sponsor on this show for as little as $75. Just contact us through our website. That's floridaartsnetwork.org. Yep, yep. All right. So today's special guest is a gentleman by the name of Varian Scott, a.k.a. Doc. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. I'm well. I was going to say what's up, Doc, but you've probably heard that so <laughs> many oh, times. Probably like a trillion, too. <laughs> so, uh, but I love it. Yeah, I, it's, I know, I know. So, um, so you are a scriptwriter slash filmmaker, right? Yes. yes. Uh, with an interesting story. Um, yes. Um, you want to share, you don't want to, you know, or yeah. whatever you want to share about it. Um, but you uh, initially weren't looking at film. Right. You know, well, you were when you were younger. Why, right. why, don't, you, why don't you just tell us the story? Yes. Okay, yes. My name is um, Varian Scott. Um, everyone calls me Doc, as you said. I'm originally born and raised here in Miami, Florida. Um, originally, as a kid, we used to play with the camcorders. You remember the, the RCA camcorders oh, and stuff yeah. like that? So we were doing, we were actually editing and doing things that we 
didn't know at the time what we were doing. So, you know, as time progressed, after high school, I jumped head first into the medical field. Mm -hmm. um, started in pre-med, I got a job at a clinic in Miami-Dade County, Florida, and I rose through the ranks to become part owner of several different medical clinics where we dealt with HIV, cancer patients, um, general practice as well. Hence Doc. Yes, yeah. that's where the name Doc comes from. So during my tenure in the, in the medical field at that time, um, an opportunity kept presenting itself. And I had to make a choice. It was either continue to go to school to become a cardiothoracic surgeon or become an illegal millionaire. I chose the illegal millionaire route by buying and selling HIV and cancer medication on the black market. Um, I made a lot of money. I did it from, from 23 years old up to 36 years old when I got in trouble and I had to go do federal time. Um, my first cousin, testified against me in trial, um, along with the pharmacist and several other people. But unbeknownst to me, it was a blessing in disguise. You know, I had to go through that. So just fast forward and during trial, once they came back, I was charged with 21 counts of healthcare fraud and conspiracy to commit healthcare fraud. Once I was found guilty, I felt God personally put his hand on my shoulder and say, doc, you gotta trust me on this. I said, okay. Let's go. While I was in, I was sentenced to 12 years, and during my time, I reprogrammed my mind and taught myself screenwriting. That's when the bug came back from its original form of me as a kid mm -hmm. doing that. Because like I said, after high school, I didn't know what I really wanted to do. I just jumped head first into the medical field. So while I was in, I taught myself screenwriting. I knew how to tell stories. I just didn't know how to format the actual um, um, story in the screen, yeah, the script, the screen yeah. in the script form. Yeah, so far, this sounds like a good script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah know, oh, right? We get we get into that. We get into <laughs> that. <laughs> so so you know so after um, after I did nine and a half years, I came home with thirteen screenplays, different genres: action, comedy, drama, religion, superhero. You name it, I, I wrote it all. Once I came home, after six months and a half, I shot my first film called Those Greedy Bastards, which is on um, Amazon Prime, Tubi, Apple TV. And that's what spawned the film, what we're doing next, what Richard and I are producing as well, called Medicine Game. It's about my life story, but it's being told from a whole different perspective. And I'm letting the female lead be me. I just flipped the whole thing because while I was in, when I, when I dissected Hollywood and, and looked at everything from a different perspective, I got tired of seeing females in film being looked up as only sex objects or, mm -hmm. you know, all they could do is be a maid or, you know, something degrading. So that's what made me flip the story and tell it from a female perspective. Um, I, I want to give an A-lister the name, the shout out, but I can't. Yeah, because I, of the legal. I know. Once I we know, signed it, I, I do it. But we definitely have um, a A-list director attached to the project as well as a lead. Cool. Yeah, yes. we're and we're we're so excited about this project. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's it's, it's amazing. The redemption side of it, it feels so good. Like I said, when I look back on on. on my time while I was doing the bid, and I, I didn't have time to have anger and hate for my cousin and the people that testified against me, mm -hmm. because I would have missed the whole thing while God sat me down. Yeah. Which means I won't be sitting here talking with you guys right now That's to right. inspire some other people. Yeah. And like I tell people all the time too, you know, rehabilitation is for those that want to be rehabilitated. Yes. I wanted to be rehabilitated. Yes. You know. Absolutely. So, like I said, from this point forward, um, the rest is history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rest, as I say, <laughs> is, is history, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's, it's amazing how God works in, in people's lives. In beautiful ways, man. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful ways. Man. Sometimes scary ways. Yeah, that you can't understand at that moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you just have to trust God. Yeah. And, and, and know, not believe in God. You have to know God and how and, God works. And sometimes yeah. you don't know he's helping you until a few years later when you look back and went, oh, look what he did. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, exactly. And you know, sometimes, exactly. sometimes things will happen in our lives that we may never understand while we're on this earth. <laughs> while we're still living. Yeah. Yep. Ex yeah. Exactly. And we're going to have to say, uh, hey, God, I got a couple of questions I've been meaning to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take me through this part, man? I mean, you yeah. Show me. Yeah. I know when, when God sees me, he's going to go, 
Oh my me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yes. so um, it's it's a really interesting story yes. that 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 you've you've got. Um, I've been going I've been going through the script because you know now we have to look yeah. for uh, product placement opportunities yes. and, and everything yes. else. Uh, of course, that's going to change now that our location of has course, kind of changed of course, of course. a little bit. Yes. So uh, yeah, um, you guys are probably not going to see me for a couple of months because I I'll be traveling. Um, but I will stay in touch, and you know, hopefully. Uh, so how long have you been on the outside? Hook. <laughs> I came home. I, my, I first got indicted on Christmas Eve, 2008. Right. They couldn't wait till after Christmas. They arrested me at my house in Bell Harbor. Christmas on Eve. December 24, 2008, at 8 a.m. What? I didn't know yes. that part. Yes. And ho, ho, they ho. wouldn't give me a bond. They wouldn't give me um, nothing because they wanted me to tell them who I was selling the medicine to overseas, and I wouldn't reveal nothing because I don't believe in that. Not me personally. Yeah. 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 You know, I knew what I was doing when I got into the game, into the business, or whatever, and. In all honesty, some things you got to take to the graveyard with you. Yeah, and that's yeah. all I'm gonna say. I, I don't believe in being no um, no no snitch if, from the streets or, or all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Cause like I said, I know what I was doing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Made a lot of money from it. I enjoyed it. It's like when most people always they want to benefit everything that the game has to offer, but when it's time to answer, nobody yeah. wants to do it. Yep. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. So I came home July 10th. 2018. Oh, right before COVID. Right before COVID. Right before COVID. During that next, that next, let me see, nine months, I was at the halfway house in West Palm Beach. So once I got out of the halfway house, I shot my first film. Yeah. Shot my first feature film on top of an autobot. I was too determined because during that nine and a half years that I did do my time, I was praying and I was um, just thanking God and, and like, I'm going to get this done one way or another. You know, I'm not going to let you down. Yeah. And, and I was too determined. During COVID, we shot it. From September 1st until September 25th, we so, got this film done of 2020. So I I, I got to ask you, yes. um, when you when you were in in prison, kidnapped. When I was kidnapped, yeah. I like to call it kidnapped. Reason oh, being, okay, I was held against my will. <laughs> I didn't be in there. Yeah, that's right. If you think okay. about it, if you want to get tell right. it, I, I was really held uh, against my will. I like to call yeah. it kidnapped. You were abducted. I was abducted, <laughs> but it, I was abducted for a reason, and and now mm -hmm. I. I thank God every moment that you abducted me. So, what, what, how did you learn, you know, the the script writing and and all this other stuff? Oh yeah, it was this lady by, in my in my first location in the federal system. They send you across the country. It's not like a state prison where you only stay in Florida. Right. So my first bid was in um, Louisiana, and like I said, the bug had to cover my body all over again. So I asked the librarian, Miss Jones. I never forget her name. I'm gonna thank you one day, person, Miss Jones. Thank you. And she went on the internet and got me everything I needed to learn how to format an actual screenplay. Wow. And from that moment, it, it, everything else just came so naturally and just so easy. So when I finished one, because a lot of people don't understand, you can get lost in that system very easy. Oh, yeah. Very easy. Because, you know, you have your homeboys and all this other stuff. You don't want people to think that you're this or that or whatever. But I knew I was on a mission. So when I finished one script, mm -hmm. I had to jump on the next one. Like God said, oh, sit back down. It's another <laughs> idea. You're not going to get lost. You're going to get this one way or another, in which I've already, I was already, already embedded completely yeah. into it at that moment. Yeah. So that that kept and you focused. She, and that kept me focused. It kept me out of trouble. Kept me out of kept me out of focus. Kept from being influenced by the homeboys, you know, yeah. the cars and all that stuff there, whatever. Yeah. No, yeah. And and it's it's real easy to get into more and more trouble. Oh man, inside, yeah, because you you you're just you're just in a wall. You, yeah. you can't do anything, you know, and, and like I said, it's so easy to get lost, but I, I stayed the course. Again, I, I thank God every moment, man, because now look what we're about to do right now. We yeah. just signed a major deal, too, with um, Sony AMG uh, distribution for our company. Yeah. So it, it's like from this point, it's nothing but past the stars. The limit. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was going to gonna say that, and I was like, Mm, you're gonna, you're gonna say what? I was gonna, I was gonna mention Sony, and I was like, wait, should I mention it yet? So, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, it's, I'll, it's, I'll follow, I'll follow your lead. Yeah, yes. and now comes all the paperwork that we have to do. Yes, for yes, yes, which incentives. we've already gotten ninety percent of it done. We're, we're pretty much we got ninety nine percent done. Just yeah. one percent that we got to do. Um, AMG is, is 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 was 
absolutely amazed by the story itself and the attachments that we have. And they gave us that deal right on the spot. Yeah. And I know it wasn't nobody but God. I know it was. It, there's no question or doubt about it whatsoever. Because while I was kidnapped, I played every scenario. <laughs> I know it's. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. No, no, I'm no, sorry. No, it's just, no, it's for real. I've never heard it, it, never heard it put that way before. before. Yeah. I, was, I was kidnapped, you know? <laughs> but during that time, um, I, I just knew that I played every scenario that somebody might want to try to come buy our script, I buy us that, blah, blah, blah. But that'd and be, a, that'd be fruition. a good name for a script called Kidnap, and nobody would realize what you were talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Really? But think about it. It's really kidnapping. It's really basically. Yeah. They don't care about your family. The federal, they don't care about your family. They don't care what you had going on. And they knew my charge was just white collar. It's not like I was a, a, a terrorist or anything. Right, right, right. It's white collar crime. Come on, man. Yeah. All right. So we're going to need to come back to that. Uh, right now, we're going to We're going to be kidnapped for... by some sponsors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a quick commercial break. In a good break. way. In a good we'll be way. right back. What's up, everybody? This is Agent Romante, but most of you know me as Esteban Hulu Ricardo Montoya de Rosa Ramirez from The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. I just wanted to give a shout out to my man, Richard Sosa. He is one of the best acting coaches that I've had the pleasure to work with, and he's actually worked with me and my program for many years, and I highly recommend this guy. So if you have an opportunity to work with him, what are you waiting for? Now, get out of my face. Esteban Hulu Ricardo Montoya de Rosa Ramirez. I'm out. Frank A. Raffolo, a renowned author and screenwriter known for his books such as 10048, Blue Falcon, Memoir of a Soldier, and his latest, Samuel of Sarah. Check out his website, frankarafolo.com, for more info or purchase his books on Amazon. Yeah, I, had, I thought that I had shut off my phone. Next thing I know, during the commercial, it's ringing. And it was my daughter, which is funny because I was just talking about her. Um, I don't know if she was watching She was watching the show. If you're watching the show, sweetheart, I am so sorry. I will, I will call you when we're done. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's she, so she funny. She forgives you. She forgives you. Your dad. I, I know dad. she does. She's, she is, has grown to be an amazing woman. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, she really has. And then I have my boys. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say it like that because I, I, I adore my, my, my boys. But, uh, okay, so uh, I digress. It's that whole ADHD thing. Sorry, I'm a squirrel. Um, so back to, back to your, your, story, your story. So what was the name of that librarian, Ms. Ms. Jones? Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Jones. I just can't remember her first name, but I know her face. Yeah. But I definitely want to go back. It was in um, Pollock, Louisiana, in some rural little part in Louisiana. And um, that was the name of the, the, um, the prison that I first went to. Um, and she, without hesitation, which I knew, again, when I look back on it, it was from God. Yeah. It was destined from her. Because, you know, most people would say, I can't do that. She actually went on. I hope I'm not getting her in trouble. You know, it was just. Uh, yeah. But she went on the <laughs> internet know, right? and, and got that thing. But it was all ordained by well, God. Well, they have incentives in Louisiana. So you may be doing a movie there soon. Maybe you get to see her sooner. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. It's possible. Hopefully yeah. I, I mean, the rebates in Louisiana are like 36 to 40 percent. Oh, okay. Which, which is which is pretty cool. Right. Pretty cool. She was, uh, the, she was the librarian. Yeah. I never forget her face, though. I know her face. Yeah. Yeah. And she yeah. she got that for me, and it was no looking back from that point. No looking back. Yeah. And and so, ex explain a little bit about because Frank and I have 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 both done done this um, a little bit about how difficult it is to take a story. Oh, yeah. And compress it, it into like 90 to 100 pages. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, it, it, it's, <clears throat> it's challenging, but it's also fun. I enjoy it because, you know, I get to jump in and out of every character. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like I'm, I'm cuckoo clocking or anything like that. I'm just being creative. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just being creative and jumping yeah. in and out of every character. Like I said, to compress it all into 90 to 120 pages. That's why Medicine Game is going to be a part two as well because I couldn't put it all in it because everything that went along during that, that whole 
regime, now regime is not a good word. Um, yeah. During the whole time that I was doing the healthcare fraud thing. Right. So it, it, it's a lot. Episode in your yeah, I had to cut it off at 120 pages, which means we have part two to it, which takes on no different level. Yeah, the sequel. The sequel. The sequel. That, so have you started writing the sequel yet, or it's been written? Oh, it's it is written. It's, it's written, written already. Yeah, it's okay. already written. <laughs> it's, it's why, am I, it's, why am I not surprised? Why, why is it not surprised? It yeah, yeah right, it's, what, it's one of the thirteen. It's one of the thirteen that I came home with. Um, I have sequels, and like I said, but I always. From one genre to the next genre, I always push myself. Because you know, you have some screenwriters only could focus on one genre. Yes. Like they only could write horror or just action or comedy. No, I write them I, all. I write them all. I write them all. I, yeah, I, I take myself, I can completely block out everything and just get into that world. Yeah. I don't get writer's block. That's a, that's a gift. That's a thing's gift. That's a, 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 I don't a gift it. for me. That's good. Exactly. I don't get writer's block. Yeah. Because it's like, it's a gift, man. You know, sometimes yeah. you can't explain the gift. You just have to thank God for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've written two things at the same time, going from different genres. Exactly. I actually wrote two scripts at the same time. No means no. The second film that we're doing, and um, and uh, My Advice Bad Girls, which is an all action film. Yeah. I wrote two of those. I was jumping in out of um. Yeah. You um, jump in on a character in our genre. Yes. It That's was fun. actually fun though, man. To be honest. Yeah. It sounds cool, cool to some people, but I'm gonna be honest. It's not. I don't. I don't know that I can. <laughs> that you can I do can. it. Yeah, it's, it's as, fun. As ADHD as I am, you know, I don't, well, actually, maybe I'm the perfect person. You're yeah, perfect person. <laughs> I, have a, I have a favorite saying, uh, um, nothing's impossible. It's just a matter of figuring out how. Yep. Yeah, this is, this is, this is true. This yeah, is very true. Never impossible. Just figure it out. And yeah. so what, what is your, like, thought process when you're, when you're writing? Because, like, for example, oh, like, I, I know... I know my characters, my main characters, right. right? And then I put them in the situation and I let my characters tell the story. Right. They kind of figure it out. Right. right? But different people have different, different, different processes. Different how they processes. Do. I actually process by playing thousands of movies in my head to mm -hmm. not mimic that. Mm -hmm. That's why all of our screenplays are original pieces. Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure that I don't go, if I do take something from a scene that I've seen before, I'm going to completely flip it and turn it around and, and see, you know what, we've never seen it this way before. Or what? I'm not saying that I've seen every movie that was ever made, right. Right. but that's my process. And like you said with the characters, I put the characters together, I, I first write down the names, and as I'm writing the names down, you know my brain go to turn at a trillion operations a second. Yeah. And I already say what Doc Girl is going to say, or what Chantel is going to say, or what uh, Dr. Lomas is going to say. During mm -hmm. that time, you like I, you write like I do. Yeah, you see exactly yeah. the characters talk to you. Yep. Yeah, they they do, and it's funny because um, I have caught myself laughing at <laughs> exactly. you know like I'm I'm, exactly. I'm writing away, and all of a sudden exactly. I start laughing. I'm like, oh well, that was funny, you exactly. know. Like, be, and and they yeah. surprise you. The characters can surprise yeah, they can. you. Yeah, they can. It, it's your thoughts. Yes. But you're thinking as the character, the character. at the at the. So time imagine time. being kidnapped around the killers and everybody, all the tough guys in the world or whatever. And like you say, you're writing a character, and then you start laughing like, "Doc, you all right? Uh, this is, <laughs> leave me alone right now. I'm in my zone right now." You ever get a, the voices in my you head. Ever kill off a character and then get upset? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. You, you kill off a character, character and then you get upset. And then get upset. And like, dang, should I have done that? Yeah, no, it's, it's... And then it just... Yeah. It just comes. It just flows naturally. Yeah. For me, and like I said, for, for Frank, you know, it just flows naturally. Yeah. And, and when, you're, when, you're a good, when you're a good writer, it generally means that you're a good reader, too. Yes. And here's the funny thing, all right? So, like, you know, you, you were saying a moment ago how you don't like to mimic movies and, you know, other right. movies and stuff like that, right? I mean, it's almost unavoidable to a certain degree because... Right. There are only what thirty-two different types of stories, but there's like so a million it. ways to, to, write to it. say it. You know, like uh, there's the uh, there's the kidnapping story, there's the bank right. heist story, right. Right. boy meets right. girl, girl meets boy, boy meets boy, boy. Me girl yeah, meets boy. girl. <laughs> yeah, well, right. yeah, yeah. What? Well, well, yeah, exactly. So there's only like thirty-two certain categories of stories, right? right? right. But you can tell those stories in in an <coughs> infinite Excuse number me. of ways. In a million different yeah. ways, man. Yeah. Whoever, and that's where whoever, the creative process comes right. in. Whoever would have thought Seth MacFarlane, when he came up with Ted, would have done it. Oh, my gosh. A cussing teddy bear. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it killed the box office. And, and that's why I like to tell people, yeah. push yourself, you know, stop following the norm or think that it can't happen this way. Because, again, nothing's impossible. Yep. Just a matter yeah. of figuring out how. Yeah. He and figured out how. And unfortunately, our story has about ended. Exactly. Wait, what? No, yeah. we still have a we still have no. a couple of minutes. No, I just got a I got a note. I got a. Did he give you? I the, got, he, he gave me the. He gave you the wink. He gave me the half a peace sign over there when. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have, we only have two minutes to go. Right. Right. Yeah, the half a peace sign. We're number one. <laughs> yeah. Number one. We're number one. Exactly. Oh my gosh! I can't. Yeah. I, I can't believe how quickly yeah, I mean, time goes by. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, when you have a good guest, a, it goes yeah. by like a snap. Yeah, it does. When, oh, you have, when, that, when that chemistry is there, it, it's like time doesn't exist. Yeah. It's like you can't put a price on a good meal or a good time. You know? You yep. just can't. That's, yeah. just, that's just the way For it is. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Exactly. Did, I just, I just, did I just plug yeah, MasterCard? Cut, yeah. cut the check, Visa. Oh, well, MasterCard. Who knows? Maybe we'll yeah, get, maybe they'll we'll get some, sponsors now. Maybe we'll get some free pizza or something. Yeah, yes. I know, right? All right, Doc. Well, thanks so much for for being on our show. Be, but before before you go, why don't you let everybody know how they can contact you? You know, any social media, website, whatever. Right. Yes, yeah, so you can contact me on um, my website, which is Scotland Movie Group. That's S C O T T L A N D Movie Group. Like on his hat. Excuse me, Scotland three zero five dot com. I just re I just got a new website. So, ah, okay, yeah. good. So okay. it's scotland305.com, and that's where you can locate us and see all the feature films that we have coming out um, now and in the, few, the near future. We have projects going to keep us working for the next seven years consecutively, doing three feature films a year. So yeah. that's where you can find out everything. If you want to audition or send in your tapes or for work or whatever, we're all about the opportunities and giving people. So just reach out, but be serious. Yeah, because we'll, I feel like we're going to be filming all over the place. All over the place. Yeah. Yes. yes yeah. Yes. So we're, we're, really, we're really excited about this. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. can't, I can't wait. All right. Uh, well, thanks again for, for tuning in. Look, you know, I forgot that we even had this. this, this slate. We got yeah, the slate. slate. You know, you forgot just, the slate. I forgot the slate. I forgot the slate. Yeah. I know, right? All right. Quiet sticks. Yeah, that never happens with me. They get in front of me and... <laughs> like, um, let me see. Do I put this... Uh, put that on. Uh, that'll work. All right. Yeah, see, that's the... Uh, squirrel. Squirrel, I'm all over the place. All right, so there's our, our website on the bottom of the screen. Uh, right on our landing page tells us a little bit about uh, what, what we're doing, what we want to do, uh, and all the different ways that you can help. And, and remember, your, your gifts are tax-deductible. Uh, we are a 501c3, and we appreciate uh, any help that you, can, that you can give us. All right? So, like they say, ciao for now. Ciao for now. See, See you next, next week. week. Thank you for watching The Artist Love. Make sure to tune in next time for another great show. A show that was produced by Ant Media Productions and hosted by the Florida Arts Network with your hosts, Richard Sosa and Frank A. Rufolo.